Hi, how's it going? So, today's video. Um, in the comments, someone asked me if I could do a breakdown of uh, level 3 mission running and kind of what you're supposed to do, kind of fittings and stuff like that. And more than happy to do it. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't very specific on what type of missions. Now, I'm going to go on the basis that it's security missions just simply because. I believe that the uh, mining missions and the uh, logistics missions are fairly self-explanatory. Pick it up, take it to where it needs to go, drop it off, or go and mine me this much material and bring it in from a specific spot. So I don't think there's much by way of value that I can add to that. So I'm not going to cover off those kinds of missions. However, if it is something you want me to do, by all means, I'm more than happy to do it. Um, Today's video is specifically going to be focused around um, level 3 missions, specifically. The reason why I've gone for this is because currently, as of, uh, what, September 2020, just in case this is being watched in the future, um, currently at the moment, Alphas only have access to level uh, 3 missions, level 2, level, level 1, level 2, and level 3 missions. Um, so... This is kind of designed as, as as your way to kind of get into that. You may be using this to, to, to fund your way into a battleship. You may be looking at using this as a supplement to making money so that you can, I don't know, fund your accounts or just your way of having fun. So hopefully this video proves helpful. And if it does, I would really appreciate it if you could go ahead and press the subscribe button. Uh, we are very close to uh, a thousand subscribers. Um, so close it has come around so quickly I, I wasn't even expecting it so um for all those that have already subscribed i really appreciate it and um uh it's nice to know that there are that many people out there that enjoy this content as much as i do so um that's always good uh if the video does help like i said a uh, uh, hit and subscribe would be fantastic also if you press the like button it means that i know you enjoyed the content and it means that i know maybe you know can do some more of this stuff and work on other areas as well and cover those off so today's video is going to be a four-part video you will notice some segments from this video in the other f in the other three sorry uh, so you may notice some of the segments from this in those as well this was mainly just because some of the tips and the tricks that I'm going to be going through in the first video will also be applicable to the other three what are in those other three those other threes are the the other three are race specific so in this video I'll be covering off one race in the next one I'll be covering off another and basically I'll go through Kaldari, Galente, Minmatar and Mar and basically there are fits for all four races in battle cruisers that are more than capable of running level three missions. They will also run level twos and if you can get them into the level ones, they will also run the level ones. So it is a fairly versatile ship. The issue I can only see you having with the level ones is that I don't believe, that I, th I think there are certain ship restrictions on, on those. So you may or may not be able to get into them. So yeah. That's, that's kind of an overview of what's going to come. So the next bit is getting into the actual ship and getting ourselves set up. So we'll stop here and we'll jump over to the ship. So be right back. Ready? One, two, three, go. So we're going to be running these missions in a Drake. This is the Kaldari uh, ship and uh, it is... Again, it, it's it's one of the more versatile ships with regards to what it's used for. Um, you'll tend to find that this one can be used in PvP, and way back when, when I used to do a lot of PvP, it was one of the more dominant ships that we used to use. Um, and there was a there was a joke that used to go around, which was "I fly Drake," which came from I believe a triple A fleet with a um, a gentleman whose name I can't remember and he was uh, Norwegian and um, he uh, he literally just jumped on TeamSpeak and said FC I fly Drake and that was pretty much where that came from and so yeah that's that's the Drake <laughs> it is a um, it is a missile boat and I'll show you some of its bonuses here it does look really nice it's really sleek in its design uh, it's quite flat quite quite symmetrical uh, which is one of the nicer things one of the things that did used to bug me quite a lot when uh, when they first brought these out uh, particularly when they added the missile turrets 
is it wasn't even. You would end up with more on one side than you did on the other, and it used to really bug me for a ship that was so symmetrical that the uh, the missiles, you'd have one here and nothing here, and it's like, can I just have those evened out, please? But you know, CCP in their in their in their uh, <laughs> in their moment of enlightenment went, hmm, we can fix that, and they did, which is great. Uh, this ship itself, like I said, is a missile boat. So you can see here, the bonuses per level are four percent bonus to all shield resistances, and then a ten percent bonus to all kinetic heavy missiles and assault heavy assault missile damage. It's then got a roll bonus. This is not a per level bonus. This is just a flat bonus, which is a 25% bonus to missile velocity, which we are going to be utilizing. It again has a uh, bonus to command links, but we're not going to be using those for the sake of this video. Um, these do provide additional perks, but again, for the sake of this video, they're not going to be being used. So we'll get into the fittings. With the Drake, um, this is a fairly normal fit. Um, anyone that is familiar with Drakes previously will, will have seen this. Um, anyone that is new to Drakes, this is a fairly common fit for the Drakes. They don't tend to be active tanked to a point where they've got shield boosters. Uh, instead, what they've got is they've got a large amount of shields, they've got some resistances that are being applied, and then they've got relays in the bottom that will help increase that. Um, if you are coming to this as someone that's got a bit more skill points, maybe you're an Omega already and you've got access to some of the higher, higher skills, then by all means feel free to swap these out as you see fit. Currently got Tech 1 missile launchers on here. Um, then we've got some Tech 2 hardeners. Uh, both of these are multispectral. And we've got, again, mainly Tech 1 modules here. Uh, Tech 2 ballistic control. These are all accessible to alphas. You can upgrade these to Tech 2 as well, which will again give you more shields per second. Um, with regards to this ship itself specifically, one thing that I would always recommend is to use uh, a website that we're going to bring up shortly um, to look at what type of damages you're going to encounter. Depending on the race that you're, you're, you're likely to encounter, what you can do is swap out one of these hardeners here for a specific hardener. So instead of it being multi-spectral, it could be um, EM, thermal, kinetic, or explosive. Still go with the active hardener, but you want it to be either EM, thermal, kinetic, or explosive, depending on how you get on with the mission. Usually two multispectrals is more than enough to handle it, but in the off chance that you go into this mission and you find, no, this is too much for me to handle, go ahead, take out one of the uh, uh, multispectrum hardeners and replace it with a, um, a, a damage specific hardener instead. With this build, it will be available in the description below. All you have to do is go to a website called Eve Workbench, which will pop up. When it does, you'll be presented with this. Obviously, this is currently an, uh, a Vexa, but for the sake of this, um, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you'd click on EFT here when you've got the website open. It's gonna present you with this. You just simply click in here, press Control A, and then click Copy to Clipboard. Once you've copied it to clipboard, you can go ahead and close that window or minimize it, however you need to. Go over here under where it says here to browser on your fittings window. Down here, you've got three, three lines where it says import and export. Click on import and export, go to import from clipboard, and you can open up the fittings here and you will be able to save, simulate, and buy all for the fittings and the ship so you're ready to go. This ship does not require implants. It is done on a clean clone and has been tested by other people as well. So they have, the, it's not just my skills that have been factored into this. Um, one of the one of the more common things that I, the, the one of the more common responses that I got with regards to this was that when they were running the level three missions, um, they did need to, um, they did sometimes need to take out one of these hardeners and fit it for a faction specific one. But we'll get into how you know which one of those you need to cater for next so that is the drake and its fittings in a nutshell so we'll get on to picking up the mission and how we kind of decide what we're going to do next okay let's do that okay so we're going to pick up our mission now um so i'll talk to the agent and she's going to tell me she's got me a mission hopefully okay 
So there we go. So this mission is called Cargo Delivery. Now, one of the uh, one of the utilities that is probably going to be most helpful to you, and links for this again will be in the description below, is something called Eve Uni. If you're not familiar with this, it is a fantastic resource that covers not just missions, but dead sites, um, cosmos missions. It's got information on pretty much every aspect of this game that you could possibly need so I, I i would i would highly recommend saving it in your bookmarks so you've got this information for later on as well we're going to use it in this fashion we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy the name of the mission here which is cargo delivery so we're just simply going to highlight it and then press Control c we'll then go into eve uni which i've got open here we're going to go to the top in the search bar and we are going to paste he says. Try that again. We'll go into the here and we'll paste it. And then we're going to hit cargo delivery. Wow. Okay. Try that again. There we go. Okay. So now you can see here we've got a various number of different missions. Now we know ours is level three. And we've got Blood Raiders or Serpentis. Well, in here you can see it's currently with the Blood Raiders. That's that's who this is. You can see it there. Blood Raiders. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll click Blood Raiders at level 3, and it's now going to give us a breakdown of the mission. In here you see it says, retrieve the goods, the faction that we're encountering is Blood Raiders, best damage to deal is EM and Thermal, best damage to resist against is EM and Thermal. So, if the multi-spectral hardeners are not holding up, you can go ahead and replace them. But the question is, which one do you replace it with? The reason why this has been put in this order is because whichever one is first is the one that they're doing more of. So if this said thermal and EM, it means that they're doing more thermal damage than they are EM. In which case, you would replace the hardener with a thermal hardener. In this case, it says EM, so we would replace it with an EM hardener. Hopefully that's easily understood um, if it's not by all means feel free to let me know in the comments and I will I will happily go through it with you in a bit more detail down here you can see where it says e war it says that they are using tracking disruptors so if we're using guns this potentially means that we're going to struggle to hit them um, at the bottom here it tells you what's going to happen so if you wanted to just blitz this and get in and out and do what you need to you can warp in grab the item that you need and warp out Alternatively, you can warp in, nothing will be there, and then the first wave will turn up, and then the second wave will turn up, and then it gives you a bit of information down here about, oh, there's a there's there's 2.2 million units of Veldspar in there if you wanted to mine it. Now, one of the things that you're going to see here is this X. This X means trigger. So if you kill these two destroyers, what's going to happen is it is immediately going to trigger the next wave. So you know, leave these two here until last. Destroy these, destroy these, and destroy these. Someone just followed. That was nice of them. Grey Wolf 375, you just got mentioned in a video. Good job. <laughs> um... And uh, yeah, once you've once you've destroyed those, then focus on these destroyers and destroy those next. That will trigger the next wave to turn up. And then you see here, it says that, um, okay, so apparently this one was renamed uh, to Sage Shadow. So yeah, we've got, we've got, it gives you updates as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. So using this information here, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna accept the mission We'll pick up some um, EM missiles because I don't believe I've actually got any on this character um, on uh, in this uh, in this ship at the minute. So we're going to go ahead and pick up some Mjolnir heavy missiles. We've got some in system, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to buy fifteen hundred of those just so that we've got some ready, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick those up. So, on to the mission. Okay, right. Before we get into any missions, I'm about to give you some of the most valuable advice I can think of giving you. And it's this. 
you are at some point going to encounter Griefer while running your missions. What's going to happen is they're going to scan down either your MTU or your ship, at which point they're going to warp into your mission and they're either going to shoot your MTU or they're going to start looting your wrecks. You are going to feel tempted to shoot them because they're potentially going to be in something much smaller than you. Maybe in a frigate, maybe in a rookie ship, maybe in a hauler. You don't know. But ultimately, they're going to come into your mission and they are going to do something to initiate aggression. If you fire on them, you are essentially opening up combat on yourself because you activate what is called an aggression timer. This is a 15 minute window where that pilot that has walked into your mission and engaged your mobile tractor unit or stolen your wreck or whatever they've done to engage you in combat, they have got 15 minutes where they can come and actively shoot you. If you engage them, they will nine times out of 10 either A, warp off and reship, or B, let you destroy them and then warp off and reship. At which point they will come back in a much bigger ship that is more than prepared and ready to kill you. The main reason that they're able to do this is because most of the time when they land into the mission they've got two modules fitted to their ships. The first one is a ship scanner, the second one is a cargo scanner. The reason why they have these two modules fitted is because it will give them a complete picture of what you've got fitted to your ship, what ammo you're carrying, and how much capacitor you've got available. This gives them an idea of how they need to tank their PvP ship before they come in and relieve you of your ship. Um, they can also do a bit of background checking on you by uh, putting your character's name into things like Z-Kill and into Eve Who. This will give them a bit of background into your character's PvP capabilities, age, skill history, ship types that you've used, recent losses, recent kills. This gives them a picture of your capabilities as a pilot and as a player. At that point, you're potentially in a lot more trouble because you don't know anything about them. They know everything about how you're fitted, how you're, um, how you're fitted, how stable your tank is, what ammo you've got, and what your, what your experience in PvP is. So the easiest way to avoid this situation, don't engage them. If they shoot your MTU, let them shoot your MTU. If you've got enough time to scoop it before they destroy it, go ahead and scoop it. But if not, let them destroy it. If they decide to loot the wreck that you need to complete the mission, just abandon the mission. It's not worth losing your ship over for the sake of your ship. It, it, it's not worth losing your, your ship over for the sake of the mission. So just, just let them do whatever they're going to do. If they want to go and steal the wreck, let them steal the wreck. If they want to blow up the MTU, let them blow up the MTU. Just simply warp out of the mission, return to the station and abandon the mission. One other thing that they will tend to do, and you would be surprised how often this happens, is say hypothetically, you run a mission and you've got to collect a, a report. You've got to re re uh, collect a passenger. You've got to collect something. There is something physical that you need to earn from this mission, and it's in one of those wrecks. What they'll do is they will find the item that you've got that you need to complete your mission, and they will take it. They'll then go back to station and put it on the market for an exorbitant amount of money. So say for instance, the mission requires you to, to turn in a scientist. Well now they've just stolen the scientist so you can't possibly turn in that mission. You then look on the market to see if there's one available and oh look, there's one on the market for a hundred million isk. This is them selling your mission loot back to you. Don't, don't spend your money. Don't, don't hand over any money for any reason whatsoever. Just abandon the mission and move on. Once you, if you abandon more than, I think it's, if you abandon more than two missions an hour, you will take a standing hit with that specific faction. Now that sounds like a bad thing, but you can make that standing back up within four or five missions. So for the sake of losing your ship, it's not really worth it. If you are messaged by anyone that tells you that they are part of an organization that enforces the rules of EVE, 
and they go by some their, their, their ruler called James. I'm sure a few of you have already worked out who I'm referring to, but for the sake of this, I'm not going to give them the advertisement. If you are messaged by someone and they say to you, if you want to continue running missions, you have to buy a permit and then paste this into your bio. Don't buy the permit. They are talking out of their backsides. There is no benefit to you handing them money. They do not honor those things. It is just them trying to scam more money out of you. Do not hand over any money to anyone unless you are getting something physical in return, i.e. they are handing you a ship that is worth the value that you're paying for it. They're handing you modules, they're handing you ammo, whatever the case may be, unless there is a transaction happening where you are getting something that is not a made up permit, don't hand them money, okay? It's the only bit of advice that I can give you that hopefully is going to make this whole experience a little easier because the amount of times that I've heard from someone where they've said, you know, I was running missions and I got ganked because someone came into my mission, they were flashing, I shot them and then I died. And that was the only ship I had. It's not worth losing your, losing your stuff over. If someone comes in and takes your stuff, someone comes in, shoots your MTU, Leave them to it. Just warp out, go and cancel your mission, pick up a new one, and carry on. Let them let let them have their little bit of fun. The other thing that I would suggest, don't type in local. That's what they're waiting for. They get off on that kind of thing. They're jonesing for that thing. They want you in local going, you're a big horrible person and you shot my stuff and now I've lost my ship. And they just, they feed on it. So don't, don't give them the ammunition that they need. Just move on. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this is going to stop some of you from losing ships. I know inevitably there's going to be someone out there that's going to think, that's ah, fine, I can take them. You can't. You will not win that fight. 100% of the time you will not win that fight because they are more than prepared for whatever you've got hiding up your sleeve. So just be aware, be safe, and enjoy your missions. Okay? Right. Let's get on with it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to warp off to our mission now. We are now officially ready to go. Uh, before I go and warp into the mission, the first thing I will do is I will make sure I've got my tank on. This is important. Make sure you've got your tank on before you warp into a mission. The main reason for this is because when you land, potentially there's going to be some aggression on the field. And if there is, the last thing you want to do is land there and just be taking full damage as soon as you land. The next thing that I would always recommend is that you have your D-Scanner open. Now, if you're not familiar with where to find this, down here next to the autopilot is a button that says Scanners. If you click on this, you will see one that says Directional Scanner. When it opens up, it may be opened up in the system map. If you go ahead and click the white square, it will separate this from a window and means you can have it as a separate entity. Once it's separated, if you set it to 5AU, now whenever you hit Scan, it will tell you anything that is currently in range. The reason why we're doing this is keeping an eye out for probes and anything that potentially is gonna come into our mission and make a mess. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run this mission and I will update you with the next bit as soon as we get into it. But uh, the main thing to remember, like I said, when you land, make sure your tank is turned on. Um, the only other bit of real advice that I can give you is make sure it, that you're constantly moving. Put yourself into an orbit, either manual or by just setting it to automatic at around sort of 75% speed. So down here, you'll see we've got it. We've got separate lines here that show what your speed breaks up as. And you wanna be looking for around this sort of area here. As long as it's above that, you're doing more than 75% uh, 75 speed. It means that the amount of damage that you're gonna take will be reduced. So bear that in mind when you're orbiting if it's around sort of half you want to increase the amount of range that you're orbiting at if it's if it's above that then you're absolutely fine um, and hopefully that will help uh, the only other thing to keep an eye out for would be electronic warfare um, while I'm running this I will usually prioritize the uh, frigates over any cruisers or anything like that 
just because I want to make sure that nothing is going to be potentially slowing me down using stasis webs. Uh, the only time that you would not do this is if, in this instance, we know that there is a trigger. So we know destroying the, the destroyer ships, uh, the destroyer class vessels, will in fact trigger the second wave. And we don't want to do that. You want to play it safe. Uh, if you land on the field uh, and you notice that they are broken up into three separate groups, look at where those groups are and work out what is the best way to approach them. Take your time and think about it. If you need to warp out, by all means feel free to warp out. It is a perfectly valid tactic for avoiding um, getting your ship blown up. But for the sake of this, we're gonna say that there's a group here, a group here, and a group here. If I warped into the very center and then approached the center, likelihood is I'm going to actually find myself being aggressed by all three groups. However, if I landed at the marker and then approached group A first, I can take out group A without worry of engaging group B or group C. Vice versa from A, I go to B, at this point, I can engage Group B without aggressing Group C. And then I can finish off Group C. Got another follow. Fantastic. They love interrupting me. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully that will help you with regards to controlling the amount of damage that's incoming. If it does get overwhelming, by all means, warp out. There is nothing wrong with warping out to keep yourself safe. So just, just bear that in mind. If you need to warp out, it is a perfectly acceptable tactic. So, we'll go ahead, we'll get this mission sorted, we'll get it finished, and then we'll get to the ending. So, you're right back. That's it, mission complete. So we'll go ahead and we'll call our drones. Now this device that I'm using here is probably one of the more versatile devices that you can find in the game, particularly if you are running missions, and it's called a mobile tractor unit. Um, it doesn't require any skills to use, however one of the things it will do is it will pick up any of the wrecks that are within 125 kilometers, as you can see here. That's not skill based, that is the module itself. And what it does is it goes ahead and it pulls in all of the wrecks within range and then loots them for you and puts them in a convenient in a convenient pile meaning that you can go through take all the take all the, the loot out of the wrecks and then pick everything up if you have got a salvager fitted it also makes salvaging a lot easier because it means that ultimately you haven't got to go around chasing up the different wrecks to get your stuff 
Um, if you're working in a team, this again also makes life a little easier for the uh, for the for, for whoever you've got doing salvaging and looting. Just obviously bear in mind what I mentioned earlier about the fragility of the uh, the mobile tractor unit and the uh, the risk that comes with it. Uh, on on that note, you will notice I did actually reduce the range of my uh, my scan here. This was merely just so I could clear up some of the clutter that was currently in my D scan. So I just simply reduced it down to one AU and then continued to resume scanning um, as normal to keep an eye out for anything that could be deemed potentially a threat or any combat probes. So. We'll go ahead and we will scoop the mobile tractor unit to our cargo hold and you will see that it's going to do something that you may not be expecting. It's going to go ahead and jettison everything that it's just scooped. Now, like I said, if you're working in a team, this can be really helpful because essentially your teammate can then warp in, salvage all the wrecks and then open up the cargo container that's next to all the wrecks and inside it will be all the loot that you've just scooped up for them. So cleaning up becomes a really easy task. Um, so yeah, that's it. The mission is now complete. We can go back to the station. Okay. Okay, so we are now back in the station. So we're gonna go ahead and start a conversation with the agent. Uh, we're gonna view the mission and we're essentially gonna just say that we've completed it. Now, what we're gonna get from this is 665 loyalty points, 2000, uh, 256,000 ISK, and because we've managed to complete this within the allotted time, we're also gonna get a bonus, which is 178,000. We're also gonna get our collateral back, which we've had to put up as well. So we'll go ahead, we'll complete this, and it'll turn in the mission, and we'll get our reward for it. Now, the main reason that people tend to run these missions, not just from a financial perspective of the mission rewards themselves with regards to the amount of ISK that you get, but it's mainly because of this here, the loyalty point gain. The reason for that is because if you click up here where it says loyalty point store, you can see that in here there are a variety of different objects that you can claim for your loyalty points. So you can see here I've got 277,000. Um, what you'd do is you'd scroll down to an item that you'd like to pick up. Uh, as long as you've got the loyalty point count for it and the ISK cost, some of these don't have an ISK cost associated with them. In this case, this Drake does. But we would go and we would select the Drake and we would buy that. Or we would go down here and we would select an implant. Now, obviously, I've just done this before, so I know which one is working at the moment. But if you were to look at the implants, and this is the main reason that people run them, is for, for, for the implants and stuff like that. If you go into here and you have a look at the implants, you can see that this one here costs 79,000 ISK, uh, sorry, 79,000 uh, loyalty points, and then an additional 79 million ISK. But then if you look at the market details for this, you can see that it currently is selling for 160 million. You've got some people down here that are willing to pay 1.6 for it. However, you've just paid 79 million for it, which would suggest that this number here is probably a bit more accurate, if not a bit over, but it's still a bit more accurate. So realistically, if I wanted to at this stage, I could now purchase three of these put them on the market and then turn that in for if we went at the value that's currently there, uh, 460 million isk, which is not a bad turnout. Um, the amount of loyalty points that you gain will vary depending on the mission that you're running and the kind of reward that you're gonna get. The more involved that the mission is, the more the, the higher the difficulty, the higher the payout will be, and the higher the uh, loyalty point gain will be. So bear that in mind. If you notice that the mission is about to pay you as a level three mission, that it's gonna pay you two million isk for completing it, then an additional million isk for um, completing it within the allotted time, and then it's gonna give you something like 2,500 loyalty points or something hypothetical like that. Potentially, this means that you are about to encounter a much more difficult mission, at which point I would again always encourage you to use the Eve Uni website. This will be your resource for getting as much information as you can. And that's pretty much it. All the links for the description, uh, all, all the links for the fit and the Eve Uni will be in the description below the video. So feel free to check those out uh, when you can, and um, hopefully it helps. So yeah, that is that is mission running in a Drake. Fairly simple. Yeah. Okay. To the next bit. And that is mission running.
that is it. That is that is everything you need to know uh, when it comes to running level three missions. Um, like I said, utilize the resources with regards to uh, the Eve Uni link. It will give you um, uh, the best possible advice when it comes to running missions. I could sit here and run through all the different varieties of missions that there are. Unfortunately, we would be here for ages because there are hundreds literally hundreds of different types of missions so the best advice i can give you is use the eve, eve uni website uh, paste the mission in there and look at what it tells you to do keep an eye on any triggers and any that you do come across if there if there are triggers there make sure you leave them till last with regards to target priorities if you've got say uh, frigates in there and you know for a fact that it says that they're going to be potentially warp scrambling you or stasis webbing you um, make them a priority unless they're the trigger never get yourself into too much um, too much of a, a, a of a fight if you need to by all means feel free to walk out and um, don't forget with regards to the um, uh, griefers and PvP stuff. Uh, again, if someone warps into your site, it's not worth your ship to engage them, so just don't, okay? And um, that's it. Hopefully this video has proven helpful to you. If it has, please hit the subscribe button. Like I said earlier, we are so close to the, uh, to the 1000 mark. It is unreal. I don't know what we're going to do yet, um, so again, if you've got any suggestions for what we should do for the thousand mark, let me know. Um, again, if the, if it's been helpful, um, hitting the like button really helps. It means that I know it's worked, I know it's helped you, um, and on the same point, it means that you know you're enjoying the content, and I can I can I can keep doing more of it. So, with that in mind. If you have got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or you can join the Discord. The links for that are in the description below. You can also uh, join me on stream. I stream every Thursday, Friday and Saturday starting at half past seven UK time. And um, yeah, we do PvP on Fridays and we do ISK making stuff on Saturdays. So feel free to stop by on whichever one of those days is, is most appropriate. Thursdays is more my day to kind of just sit and chill out and chat with people, answer questions, maybe play a couple of games of Need for Speed or Forza or whatever kind of feels like it'll be fun that day. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, please by all means feel free to stop by with the stream. And um, yeah, that's it for me. I'm off and I will see you all on the next one. Until then, have fun, fly safe, and don't do anything I wouldn't do, which I'll be honest with you, doesn't leave you with a lot. Enjoy. Bye.